Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about this. You got it, we're gonna talk about minimalist photography. I am still in Senia Island, as you can see behind me, and the scenery is still beautiful, there is still plenty of snow, although we are slowly entering in spring, therefore snow is melting, trees don't have snow anymore on the, over the branches and so on, which kind of removes a little bit from the winter vibes, but given the amount of snow that there is around, I mean, you can see behind me there is maybe a matter of snow still. So we still have some winter vibes in a certain way. And we're gonna try to take advantage of this. The day today is beautiful. There are like few clouds, a bit of sun, a lot of shadows over the trees and so on. So it's gonna be, I guess, wonderful. I'm gonna try to take advantage of all of this and maybe even a little bit of water. I can see that there is a river over there. Maybe it's frozen, maybe it's not, I'm not sure. And I'm gonna put on my snowshoe and we're gonna start walking over there. In the meantime, I'll let you enjoy the show. All right, see you on the way. Hi again, and <laughs> I had to put some uh, sunglasses because there is kind of a strong sun and with the white all around, I can barely open my eyes. It's, it's really difficult. So I'm gonna talk to you <laughs> with the glasses on. Um, anyways, I truly love uh, the um, minimalist photography. I really think that there is a feel to it, some, something like very intimate. Something when you look at it, it's really relaxing and it's not aggressing you in, in, in any ways possible, you can imagine. And what I also truly love about it is that you don't have to be in the most amazing place in the world to do it. You can be maybe just on your backyard, maybe in the forest close to your home and find amazing subject and find amazing possibilities for it, which makes it like a very special, very special um, photography type in my opinion. I, I truly like that. Or you can be in great locations like I am now and really try to find some amazing stuff in your surroundings, playing with trees, with mountains, with the snow. There are like tons of possibilities, obviously. but. It's not like, for example, the devil teeth that there is here uh, in Senya Island, which is a very iconic uh, place and very beautiful place, of course, but it's a little bit of a deja vu. And of course, everybody will like it because that's a, that's a very iconic place and it's beautiful. But if you show something really intimate, you really put a lot of effort into looking for it and really enjoying it. Now, the truth is that I had to take a little bit of time off from photography, like a few days, because I was photographing a lot of uh, long exposures, a lot of wide angles, seascape and stuff like that, and fjords and so on, which are like all amazing photographs, obviously, but they're like totally different from doing some um, minimalist uh, photography. So I really had to reset my mind a little bit and also get inspired. And actually to get inspired, I started like looking online at uh, photographers that I like, that are doing something really interesting. And for this, I can actually make three recommendations. So the first photograph I will mention is a French photographer. Uh, his name is called Jean-Michel Lenoir. He is a photographer that does color photography, but very intimate scenes, um, like with nature. He's playing a lot with elements, with curves and so on, and playing with all kinds of stuff that are like really emphasizing some shapes. And, and that's really just wonderful what he does. So I can only recommend you to look at his work because it's beautiful. The second photographer, he's a very well-known photographer, it's Michael Kenna. He's like playing in uh, with photography, uh, not really playing, but <laughs> taking photographs in uh, black and white and playing with a lot of diagonals, a little bit of curves. Like, And what I also truly like about him is that he's kind of going against the rules. Like sometimes you have photographs that are like just amazing, but they are just not, um, not uh, following any specific rules. And, I really like it because I think it really makes something different. And the last one is someone which is also not so well known. Uh, his name is um, Martin Vorin, and I guess I pronounce it well. And he he's actually doing a little bit more of everything, like playing with uh, urban scape, maybe streets, 
landscapes obviously and so on and he's like playing with a bit of everything and really bringing an atmosphere to the photographs and that's really something I really enjoyed watching. So looking at other photographs like this and other photographers give me a bit of insight of what I want to do and which direction I want to go. So I can only recommend you to do it when you're doing a new photography style or something you're not really used to do normally. You can like really try to do this and you will see that might give you inspiration and you might get better at what you're doing. I actually found an amazing spot here, it's just wonderful. Like you've got basically, I think it's a frozen lake normally, and there is just one tree, and on the background you've got those beautiful mountain. I guess you can see this probably on one of the side of the video. And you um, you can see that the tree is really the, the, the subject on the foreground and you've got those massive mountains right on the background and I am using here a telephoto lens that helps me to kind of compress the scene here and to um, avoid having too much depth and understand that actually the tree is really far away from the mountains and that makes it like all a little bit closer and that's just amazing and the thing I truly love on this island here in, uh, in Senia is that you got this beautiful light even during the day is just incredible like you've got those gray blue lights that are like very surprising and just amazing so i'm gonna try to shoot this in um, portrait mode which is the way i am now and i'm gonna do it in landscape mode afterwards because i truly believe that both ways may have their own atmosphere but it's just wonderful <laughs> The beauty of minimalism is that you can really play with anything you want. I mean, I was coming here with the idea of playing with trees and shadows and so on. And actually now I reached the river and I realized that there are like so much, so many patterns here um, with the snow, with the ice, the water, because the water is melted in some places and not in some others. There is some beautiful reflection of uh, small dead trees in the river right uh, right across me it's just like full of wonderful opportunities it's just amazing and i think that's the moment where you should reset your mind in not limiting yourself and on getting out of your comfort zone and like really looking for stuff that you would not look normally that you would almost never do of course a few principles to follow like if you want to do like some symmetry just try to get like a beautiful symmetry not something a little bit cranky, like you can play with like, I don't know, making maybe some diagonals in the symmetries and so on, doesn't have to be like a straight up and down, but like try to make it look logical and interesting to look at. So I'm gonna continue and of course I'm gonna share with you some more pictures because I, I believe that that's what I'm here for. So I don't say they would be perfect pictures because it's not really, as, as I already said, a style that I do very frequently. But I believe that I do have some few nice ideas here and there are like some few really nice opportunities that I should grasp. Oh, and let me remind you guys, in case you're not yet subscribed, you can subscribe with the subscribe button below or the one which is like in the corner right here. You can click on it and subscribe to my channel if you like my content, of course, and if you like the places I'm showing you. And in case you also like this video, then why not giving me a thumbs up because that's fairly cool. That's rewarding for me and the YouTube algorithm like it too, so let's please everyone here.
it's actually really interesting how certain techniques can apply to one photography style and another one. For example, now I'm gonna use a ND filter, ND mill, because the, the light is very strong and I need to go down by 10 stops, because there is some water flowing around, as I said before, and I have like a beautiful scene with a foreground which is made of ice, then the water flowing around, and on the background a nice tree which is uh, the one reflecting actually on the water. And I realized that actually it would be really nice if the water flowing would be kind of smoother, and for that I'm using an ND filter which is something I normally use more uh, when I'm uh, like uh, on the seaside, like doing some seascape photography. And by the way, if you're interested, you can watch this video here, which uh, uh, where I am sharing actually some more tips about seascape photography. And this, uh, this scene is actually really intimate, really nice. And I'm pretty sure that adding this filter will really add up to the picture. So I'm trying to get as long exposure as I can so that the water gets very smooth. But since we are like in the middle of the day, well, we are later in the afternoon, but here it's like middle of the day in some other places. And the, I need to really use a 10 stop filter. I need to use my ISO at a low level which is at 80 on my Fuji. Uh, I need to increase a little bit the aperture so that uh, I let less light enter to the sensor. And my shutter speed is at uh, about 10 seconds, which actually should be fine to apply the effect I would like. Although, of course, maybe something longer, like maybe a minute would be even better. I might actually even try to use the, the other filter I have. I would plug it into it, my... Uh, and the 64, which is a three stops, and that might help a little bit. Let's see what it provides me. I'm finally on my way back to my motor home and I stopped on the way, I found this small tree here. I guess you can see it on the camera, it's bended. And there is a nice shadow, which is a kind of course parallel to it in some way. And it's just really beautiful because it's really in the middle of, um, of this, uh, all this snow, this untouched snow. And I tried to do something like to capture it. I used my mid-range uh, lens for this. I captured it from the top of it and a little bit bended on the back so that it kind of gives an impression of, uh, of being small, being big at the same time, not knowing exactly what the size of actually this branch is, which is the interesting part of it. I guess that's also part of minima minimalism. So actually, I think it's the interesting thing here is that we saw that minimalism can be like just playing with tree and shadows, playing with the water, playing with the reflection, playing with shapes in um, uh, in the ice, all kind of things, all the things that are surrounding you. That's actually the conclusion of uh, and the approval as well of what I was mentioning earlier in the video that you can do minimalism with pretty much anything which is surrounding you. And that's the beauty of it. And it can, of course, sometimes just give you like really amazing stuff. Sometimes you won't be that successful because unfortunately things won't really fall into place. Like now it got really difficult because the sun is kind of the direction in the direction that uh, <laughs> I wasn't really uh, um, anticipating that it reflects like directly into the water and every time the angle I wanted to shoot was with the sun right in front of me so it got really difficult and I really had to uh, to, to stop and decide to come back uh, to, to my motorhome because conditions proved to be a little difficult but I found this one and actually that makes up for the for the missed shot that I had uh, before close to the water so I'm fairly happy about this I 
truly hope that you guys enjoy watching this video, that you learned some few stuff, that it's the, the shot I showed you maybe inspired you, maybe gave you some ideas for for future shots that you were not really planning. I mean, for me, it's like, as I said, it's something I'm not really doing. So really interesting to do, to do this exercise. It's, uh, I kind of like it. I think it's even nicer when conditions is, uh, conditions are even like better and especially the light if you go like at sunrise or sunset i'm pretty sure you get like better light and more interesting stuff to do of course now i'm in the middle of the day so i have to do with what uh, what i was planning i'm planning to go somewhere else for sunset so i could not really uh, postpone that one because after i'm moving away from uh, from this place so i had to deal with that and in the meantime i wish you good luck with your photography and see you next week for new adventures